Well, one of the things you talk about a little bit, and it's interesting because, well, I mean, this is autobiographical uh, by nature, but sure. it, it seemed like there was a there was a prevailing sort of conflict between being noticed, having attention, being visible, fame, and acknowledgement versus this being alone, ignored, invisible, and not acknowledged. Right. And and there was sort of this yearning in in your heart that you wanted to be acknowledged. You had this, you had this, uh, um, uh, you know, you're handsome, and so it's like, okay, <laughs> we can do modeling. But at the same time, it's like, hey, I'm not just, you can't just put clothes on me and start clicking cameras. I've got something to say. Right. And, uh, and you talk about it, you said, um, it says, as, uh, as I grew up in a home that taught me to not trust anything or anyone, anything that was good or exciting or pleasurable was either a lie or very temporary, leaving me lower than I had started. Uh, I feel I feel anything, I'm sorry, to feel anything in my family was to feel pain and misery, and there was no ha happiness and very little hope. I grew up learning to expect nothing from my family or from my life, so I eventually learned to never experience disappointment, only a low-grade sadness tempered with strong doses of indifference. This colored everything I experienced from a very young age. Right. So you get real, real into you know, what you were going through. This isn't just like, right. hey, a handsome cover and a guy, you know, talking about cocaine adult parties and right. the upper echelons of modeling in the New York and, and Milan. This really gets into the journey that you took right. and, and how it was manifested through these various chapters of your life. Right, well, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's a very good section that you chose to read from. And I think that that did temper my life and the you know the the hero of the book uh, with the same name but different last name Daryl McIlvain, uh -huh. and, and I think that his his perceptions are what a lot of people uh, go through. I don't think it was a completely solo uh, that he was living in a vacuum, uh -huh. but he wanted some he wanted something more. Or, you know, I, I for lack of you know I wanted something more, something something different, and uh, you know it came from. You know, a conflicted, you know, home life and a lot of things that were going on that were not typical, and then you just didn't feel safe.